he would literally come on this side of the ball with his fingers curved here, where it would literally be like a curveball spinning out this way, which to me is unheard of. There were many reasons Dodger fans fell in love with Fernando Valenzuela in 1981. Obviously, the numbers were great. Valenzuela's midseason 9-4 record earned him the starting assignment at the 1981 All-Star Game. He was just the second rookie pitcher to ever earn the starting nod. But there was something deeper, almost magical, about watching the 20-year-old pitch. Cosmic, man. Cosmic. Just his concentration, his discipline, and then that look up just before delivery, I thought the guy was dying. His eyes rolled back in his head. I said, what the heck is that? He's not even looking where the ball's gonna be going. I always thought he was, when he was looking at the sky, he was looking at the heavens, at God for inspiration for that little bit extra kick. His wind up alone on the pitcher's mound is ritualistic. It's ceremonial. It's Mexican. Que loco, you know, it, it's, it's, that, that his craziness is part of the cure, la locura cura. I mean, this, this guy is like, he goes for broke on every pitch. His, his eyes are in the back of his head. It, he has some sort of otherworldly supernatural powers. People said, ask him why. Uh, I, I, I think that I look up and when, as I'm coming down, it makes me look for the target and that distracts me from doing other things wrong. And in pitching, that makes a lot of sense. Valenzuela's windup may have wild fans and distracted batters, but it was his mastery of the screwball that kept him off balance. Few in big league history successfully threw the pitch. Before Valenzuela, the best known screwball pitcher was the New York Giants' Carl Hubble. King Carl's best years were in the 1930s. What I remember about Fernando was the, the screwball. Uh, it was uh, untouchable, right? It confounded batters and uh, in many ways was like a disruptor. So he had this, this freak pitch. I don't remember anybody else at the time that threw, I'm sure there are other guys throwing screwballs, not a lot of them, not as many as Fernando would throw and not with the consistency and not with the effectiveness. Even now, there's not a lot of screwball pitchers. It's just a, a weird pitch. Valenzuela was taught to screwball by fellow Dodger Bobby Castillo in the winter of 1979. Castillo himself learned it from Ray Lara, who pitched at Lincoln High School in the 1960s. I threw the screwball. I went in, I worked with uh, Bobby Castillo. They were looking at Fernando real close. They said he may need a, a third pitch or another pitch. He already threw the screwball. They sent Bobo to San Antonio so that he could refine it. Amazingly enough, he never hurt his shoulder or, or, or elbow because of the screwball. And then uh, they sent me to, um, to Double A with San Antonio, Texas League, and uh, that's when um, I keep growing. And then finally I say, I'm not gonna use anymore because my record was so bad. I was under 500 winning and losing, so they tell me, um, we don't looking for your numbers, we're looking to, to learn that pitch. Soon I find the release point and uh, to throw on that pitch, the ball started moving uh, over the plate more and, um, and uh, it started working. Sherman Oaks Notre Dame High School baseball coach Tom Dill explains the nuances of the screwball with assistance from former minor league pitcher Josh Goosen Brown. Basically, it's going to be a pitch that the pitcher is going to pronate his hand this way, um, and it's going to put like a reverse slider spin on a pitch, which, which then will make the ball break the other direction. So let's say you're throwing a, a slider might be here, where you're going to get a spiral and the ball is going to break this way for a right-hander. Then a screw ball, if you're coming here, it's going to break the other direction. A guy like Fernando, his was very unique and very different. I used to study it all the time because it was the pitch. He held his like this. The way he threw it was two fingers. And he threw it with two, and you can see I've got my thumb here and my middle finger here. He threw it like this and came down this way. And the reason Fernando's was even different is this would have been the accepted way to throw a screwball. But he literally would get his fingers on top of the ball, sometimes this way, like a backwards curveball. 
So he would literally come on this side of the ball with his fingers curved here, where it would literally be like a curveball spinning out this way, which to me is unheard of. That's one of the things on changeups, you can, hitters can see a lot more of your hand, where on his, he throws with two fingers, like a two-seam fastball, and then he would get that extra movement on it by just really overpronating it and uh, getting that thing to just run really inside on hitters. And I think that's what made it such a, such a good pitch for him, and that's why he was one of the best to ever do it. He had this confidence, you know, like, like, hey, I own this place. Tonight the stadium is mine. He would walk out there, there with his long hair. He'd wind up and he would look up to the heavens. And, and that, that, that was something that I'll always never forget. And then throw a screwball that would just break as hard as anybody could throw it. He had everything going. He had, he had uh, the cultural issue. He had the greatest screwball in the world. And then he had this image that they had nine, 950,000 pictures were taken of Fernando at this point or looking up in the sky. And he was everything 